Hey everybody, it's Brandy, and today I'm going to show you how I made this super simple climbing wall for my kids. I made it for around 100 bucks, and it was pretty simple. So stick around and I'll show you how. Okay, you guys, so here is my SketchUp pattern of the wall, and obviously I am not a SketchUp guru. This is just basic stuff to help me know dimensions. And as you can see, I have a 10-foot wall there by 8 feet tall, 10 foot wide by 8 feet tall. And each sheet of plywood is 4 feet wide by 8 feet tall. So I just wanted to figure out my measurements, and this always helped a lot. I don't own a truck. So I decided it'd be best to rip the boards right down the middle in order to fit them in my SUV. So when I went to Home Depot, I got three sheets of plywood and I had them cut them all down to six and a half feet and then rip them right down the middle so it'd be by 24 inches wide. And then I would just screw them together. I also knew I would need to take a few inches off of the two side mountains in order to get each mountain to sit flush since it's only a 10 foot span. And so this would make them more manageable and make it so they would fit into my SUV. Now, my Home Depot was out of the birch plywood, but that would have been a good material to use. Their pine three quarter inch plywood was on sale. And so I got three sheets for about $30 a piece. And then I had them rip them down at Home Depot for me. Once I got them home, I decided to build each mountain individually. So I laid two pieces side by side and then grabbed a straight edge in order to determine the angle that I wanted my mountain to be. I had some scrap molding lying around and I used that to draw the straight edge. And then I have this circular saw jig that I built a while ago and I used that with my circular saw in order to cut the angles. If you don't have a circular saw jig, you can just use a straight edge piece of molding that's clamped down to your piece. As long as you measure correctly, it should be fine to cut the angle that way. And luckily these are mountain pieces, it's all decorative. You can make the angle look however you want it to. I did try to be careful, however, to cut um, on the sanded side of the plywood so that both sides of the mountain were sanded and nice finished surfaces. Once the cutting was done, it was time to drill the hand and foot holes on the surface. So I just took a pencil, laid them next to each other and kind of drew where I wanted it to be. And then I grabbed these Forstner bits by Ryobi. And I grabbed the biggest one, which I believe is one and three eighths inches wide for the hand grip. To make the hand and foot holds or grips, I decided to use this Forstner bit with my drill and I would drill two holes and then connect them with my jigsaw. This made it easy to change the sizing of the hand or the foothold and you could pretty much do whatever you want as far as sizing goes. The jigsaw did leave the plywood a little rough, so a little later I used a randover bit with my router to smooth it out. Um, or you could sand it really well. But I love how these turned out. So I made this grip a little smaller because it was meant for a hand and it's towards the top of the mountain. But you can make them whatever size you want. It was really fun to kind of play around and decide where to put them. I put between five and seven holes in each side of the mountains. So next I went downstairs and measured my wall once more to make sure I had my measurements correct. And I found and located and marked all of my studs in the wall. Okay, so I've got the space cleaned out and I've got my stud right along this electrical unit up. I'm going to start there in the middle, almost smack dab 
in the middle of the wall. And there's a stud right next. Anytime you're looking for a stud, there's always gonna be one next to an electrical box. The box needs something to hook onto. You can be guaranteed that there's one there next to an electrical box. However, you need to be careful because of the electrical wiring that goes on behind the drywall. So I've marked my stud right along here all the way up to the ceiling and I think I'm gonna start there. I'm gonna go measure um, the length that I need my two by three to be and then I'll be um, securing that and fastening that to that stud. I did grab nine two by three by eight pieces of lumber as studs to go behind these mountains. This will hold the mountain out from the wall one and a half inches, which will leave enough room behind the mountains for fingers to be able to grab onto the plywood and pull up. This should also make the mountain strong enough to be able to hold the child's weight. Now here I'm just cutting off the base part of each mountain to make sure they're all the same length. These are the studs that I'll be screwing into the wall and I will be attaching this plywood to those. I chose to use these Power Pro screws. They're three inches long and they're self-drilling so I don't have to pre-drill anything. They come with a star head and they come with a star drive bit. This helps with any slipping that might happen as you're driving the bit in. It was really easy to drive these three inch screws into studs. I didn't have any problems and it all went really smoothly. I also used the Power Pro one and a half inch um, premium screws when screwing the plywood to the studs. These were really great to use and I would definitely recommend them on multiple projects. I used my four foot level when attaching these studs to the wall studs in order to make sure I had a straight line on both sides and I would do three studs per mountain. One for the middle where the two plywoods attach together, plywood pieces, and then one at each end. Now each of these mountains are six and a half feet tall. So once I had these studs secured to the wall, I wanted the middle mountain to be a little bit taller than the side ones. So I lifted that up. My walls are eight feet or my ceiling is eight feet high. So I lifted this up a little bit higher than the outlet there that you can see and I cut the outlet hole out of the other side of the mountain so that that outlet can still be used. So on the other side of the mountain, I measured four inches up and three and a half inches in. I used my square there to mark everything out and I used my jigsaw to cut the hole. Since this is such a small cut, I just used my metal square there to help guide my jigsaw in a straight line on both sides. Now I'm just using my one and a half inch screws to ha attach this plywood to the two by threes behind. I used multiple screws in each side to ensure strength and I let my daughter test it out. <laughs> and here you can see the spacing that the two by threes allowed behind the plywood in order for fingers and toes to fit in the holes and not be smashed up against the wall. Now on to making um, mountain number two. And for this one, I stacked two pieces of plywood on top of each other. I used the triangle from the first cut to mark this cut out and took my circular saw across the top. And it's the same process. I used my drill and my Forstner bits, made the hand and foot holds, and then both mountain pieces on either side of the middle mountain needed to be skinnier. So I took two inches off the sides of each piece making each side mountain about 44 inches wide instead of 48 inches wide. 
Once this was done, I grabbed my Ryobi router and my roundover bit, and I used that to smooth out the hand and foot poles. And this actually really did a great job. It made it so smooth so that when my kids grab these holds, it doesn't dig into their skin. It makes it a lot more comfortable for them to spend time climbing and pulling. And I was really happy with the end result. But if you don't have a router, trim router, never fear. You can always take your sander. It will just take you a little bit longer. And you can smooth out those sides and round over those sides with some sandpaper. That way it will be more comfortable for their little hands and feet. Once the roundover bit was done, I took some 220 sandpaper and just did a rough sand of the front since I'll be painting these pieces, it didn't need to be perfect. And then of course I had to blow out my garage and clean everything up and nest my table saw bench underneath my miter saw bench. If you're interested in um, a table saw bench like this, go ahead and click the link and you can see how I did it. Now it's time to attach the two side mountains and these I wanted to attach a little bit lower than the middle mountain. So I attached the studs a little bit lower by maybe six inches. I just felt like this would be a little more visually appealing to the eye. Okay, so I just wanted to check in really quickly. I'm having to do the studs on this portion of the build differently because where my seam is for my mountain, there is no stud there. And on the other two, it worked out perfectly. There was a stud right in the seam where I needed to put the mountain in and screw in the joint there. That's not here. So instead, I'm gonna be running these pleats um, horizontally across two, no, three studs. And that should be strong enough. And then I'll screw in my last two mountain pieces to those. Lastly, I just went around and made sure there was enough half inch screws to make sure it was nice and strong and then I tried it out myself <laughs> and then I let my kids try it out. Watching them use it for the first time was pretty satisfying, I gotta tell you that. And now it's on to painting so I got my drop cloth out and got ready to paint these mountains. I grabbed some mist tints from Lowe's, so overall the paint cost me $3, and I decided it'd be fun to do an ombre effect since they had a couple colors sitting in their mist tint section. They had a navy and a little lighter blue, and then I grabbed one of their whites, um, and I was able to use the white for the top and then mix the white into the blues to create the ombre effect. And that is it. This entire project cost me around $115 total um, because of mist tint and paint and a good deal on plywood. And you guys, it has been a great addition to our playroom. Thank you so much for sticking around for the video. Let me know if you have any questions. And I'm curious what color you would paint your mountains if you had them in the basement, or would they even be mountains? Drop your answer in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for sticking around. We'll see you next time.